my life is over. He saw to that. I will be his victim for the rest of my life or his. This man is not a victim. He has been convicted of multiple charges of assault and kidnapping, and he has been locked up for 30 years. And in three seconds, he is about to speak directly to his real victim. What can I do, man? Just tell me, what do you want? If you want me to spend the rest of my life in here, fine. If you want me to get out and be your personal slave for the rest of my life, hey, I'll do that. If you want me to lick your shoes every night, I'll do that. Just tell me what you want, man. Did something happen in that box? I'm not gonna answer that. 13-year-old Paul Martin Andrews, kidnapped, assaulted, and trapped inside a box in the ground for eight days. But he escaped, and when he got out, he did everything in his power to ensure Richard Osley would never terrorize another little boy again. But unfortunately, that would be a lot harder than he thought. This man is a monster. This man cannot be released. I was kidnapped and tortured. He confined me in a box and daily committed acts of abuse. I tried, I tried to escape. I was in prison for eight days in a box that was like hell itself. It was a heartbreaking story as if I was in the depths of hell and couldn't overcome it. If you are not brave enough, scroll quickly past this video. The following story will be horrifying. This is my story at the age of 13. The scene that unfolded before me was one of sheer horror. I, Paul Martin Andrews, a 13-year-old boy, was buried alive underground for eight days, but somehow, I managed to escape. Forever scared by the brutal incident, I was determined to ensure that my assaulter and kidnapper, a man far from innocent, would never terrorize anyone else. My life was drastically changed in the quaint town of Portsmouth, Virginia, on a snowy day on January 11, 1973. I had been just two blocks away from home when I disappeared, causing my mother, Jennifer, to worry ceaselessly. The police conducted an extensive search, but no trace of me was found, leaving my family in anxious anticipation, fearing the worst. However, on January 19, 1973, a glimmer of hope arose when a door was discovered underground. Inside the hidden box, they found me, little Martin, chained, beaten, and barely recognizable with two black eyes. Reunited with my family, I identified Richard Osley as my tormentor, a man notorious in Virginia, previously convicted of kidnapping. Each day in that box was an endless cycle of fear, pain, and abuse. I was subjected to unimaginable brutality, constantly wondering about my mother. Was she crying? Mourning my unknown fate, survival was my only aim. When the sound of vehicles reached me, hope flickered. They had found the box, they had found me. I was discovered, battered, and chained, but alive. In the aftermath of my ordeal, Osley was sentenced to over 40 years in prison. Yet the potential of parole loomed. The traumatic circumstances of my abduction led psychiatrists to believe I might be better off institutionalized. The common belief was to forget and move on. Years passed, and I kept my horrifying secret. It was a constant burden, slowly tearing me apart. But then, 30 years later, I received a call from my mother. Osley, my worst nightmare, was up for parole. I was horrified and knew I couldn't let that happen. Fueled by newfound determination, I started a campaign to ensure Osley remained behind bars. I reached out to everyone, the delegates, the parole board, fighting the darkness of my past, the nightmares that haunted me. I opened up about my trauma. By speaking out, I not only prevented Osley's parole, but also encouraged other victims of his to come forward. Now, years later, I am an advocate for survivors of abuse, acknowledging that healing comes from addressing the pain. My message to those who have suffered is clear. You have nothing to be ashamed of. It is possible to live a life free of fear. 